Drives you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Asagi. Today I have special guest, Katy Cat. Hey guys, it's Katy Cat from the channel Ash Japanese or the Katy Cat channel. And today we're gonna do a triple collaboration with mm -hmm. Asagi. Asagi, Ash Japanese, and Katy Cat. Yeah, so check out both of her channels, Ask Japanese and Katy Cat. Thank you. So, what are we doing today? Today, I am sharing ultimate things only exist in Japan. Okay. And I want to, to review, yeah, and react to those uh, things. Let's get started. Mm. So, you know, Japan is uh, unique for their. Uh, vending machine. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> We've done actually quite a lot of videos where we oh. went to different vending machines and tried them out. Cool. Then, do you know there is a vending machine for raw horse meat? <laughs> raw horse meat? Yes. You know, oh. horse sashimi. How safe is that? That's the first thing I would think of is the safety. <laughs> actually exists. Oh, it's frozen? Yeah, it seems like it's frozen. You yeah. have to take back home and d dissolve mm -hmm. the meat. Do you then cook it or do you eat it then raw once it's unfrozen? Yeah, it's supposed to be for sashimi, so it's raw. Ooh, I, like, mm -hmm. as a European, the first thing I would think of is, you know, disease, danger, <laughs> no! <laughs> That's the first thing I think of. But since I know that Japan is mm. very, very careful with those kind of hygiene and food restrictions, I guess it's okay. Mm. Well, would you eat it? I would. I mean, I've oh. tried basashi, but I okay. cook it first. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Since we're vending machines, did you know there are vending machines that sell all kinds of mm. insects for eating? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. There's one actually around our company. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can have like uh, cricket crackers uh, and stuff like cricket, that. Nah. Well, I don't like it. I don't like it. So what are you saying? You you wouldn't eat the insects, mm. but you'd eat the raw horse meat. Yeah, yeah I would. Absolutely. <laughs> I would eat the cricket cricket crackers, but I wouldn't eat okay. the raw horse meat. <laughs> Number two, there is a poo museum. In Japan. museum, poo yes. museum. There is a weird fascination in Japan with <laughs> right. feces. I'm sorry, I have to say this now. There cool. is a cool. poop kanji drill. In right. case you want to learn <laughs> Japanese language, there is a poop kanji drill which mm. teaches you how to learn kanji. There is poop chocolate. I mean, even in anime, there's like this character Arare who just loves to collect poop and run around. There's a <laughs> lot of like poop fascination. <laughs> Seems like it's more like um Instagrammable, like mm. for Instagrammable for poop. Yes. It's more like fancy. <laughs> oh, like it's pink, pink poop. Yeah, pink poop. I'm sorry. And... Uh, does I think you want to take a picture of that. <laughs> I think I would actually go and do that poop museum just to have yeah. a look. Maybe we're gonna next collaboration yeah. is the poop, poop museum. We sent on that too. Horses poop. What's next? I think this is a unique style of Japanese restaurant, Toriyakiniku, which is solo BBQ restaurants. Solo barbecue. Yes. So there is this kind of booth between oh. seats. And then and you, you can have just a tiny eat. space. Yeah. You by know, yourself. It reminds me of this ramen place where you just eat by yourself when you have yes, barriers yes. between. There seems to be more of the kind of introvert, mm -hmm. catered karaoke. There's hitori karaoke. Yes, hitori karaoke um, it's interesting. So if you're a single person, you kind of want to have yakiniku, but you don't want to be surrounded by loads of people who are all having fun, then it sounds like a good <laughs> idea, to be honest. Especially oh, really? yakiniku places are the mm. ones where people go in groups and everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And you feel bad going there by yourself you're like I'm so lonely yeah. and I don't think that's a bad thing not everyone is open and outgoing not mm. everyone wants to go with a lot of people so if you still want to go to yakiniku without feeling awkward I like <laughs> the idea what do you think about it yeah I would use it yakiniku is probably a little bit harder it's a cultural yeah. thing here in Japan there seems to be a big thing being afraid to go somewhere by yourself not sure if that's a thing in your country can you go into any restaurant by yourself or not mm. I don't think in Germany it's a big deal. I see. I go to a lot of restaurants and I just see people sit by themselves. Sometimes they have a huge mm. table all to themselves. Oh, really? So it doesn't seem to be such a big deal, at least in Germany, but mm. it seems to be maybe more of a big deal in Japan where it's a group culture. Mm -hmm. You know, we have school uniforms. Mm. It's like Japanese school signature. Recently, there are things, genderless school uniforms. Did you oh. know that? Oh, genderless school yes. uniforms. Mm -hmm. I think it was about time. Yes. Because 
I know a fashionista mm -hmm. when she went to school and we saw her the first time on Ask Japanese when we were doing street interviews. She went to school, but she had a big problem because because of her religion, mm. she shouldn't be wearing a skirt. Oh. So she was allowed by her school to wear trousers, but I'm sure mm. they must have given her such a hard time for that. So how do the genderless ones look like? These are for boys mm -hmm. and these are for girls. Mm -hmm. They have trousers for girls. So mm. girls don't have to wear a uh, boy's trousers. Mm. It, it never fits them, mm. right? <laughs> I highly agree with the fact that you should give girls and guys mm. the, the power to choose their school uniform. You shouldn't have to wear a skirt. I totally agree with that. And then I think it's a good movement nowadays. Mm. I hope it will, it will be more common in mm. Japan. I think this is only in Japan. Mm -hmm. That is very short escalators. Oh. Do you see that? So this one is the world, world record, Guinness record, mm -hmm. as shortest escalator in the world. Shortest escalator. How many steps does it have? <laughs> oh, that's very short. Yeah. What? Why even? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a second. It doesn't make sense. There's steps right. in front of it, and then there is the escalator. <laughs> you have to first go up four right? steps to then take the escalator. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, why? Why Japan? Why? <laughs> So it doesn't even help people with wheelchairs. Yeah, it or doesn't help. Like it doesn't so help people just, who need. <laughs> it's just a short escalator. What? <laughs> Not again? Why? It drives you crazy. Uh. I think you know this better than I do. But recently, there are high quality lucky bags in Japan. Oh, I love lucky bags. Yeah, lucky bags. It's the season almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quick explanation, it's like a bag with value items. For example, if you pay $100 for it, up to $300, $500 worth of value will be in that bag. And it can be items, clothes, toys. I've done so many different types of lucky bags. <laughs> yeah, so I'm getting really that. excited now because <laughs> I love them so much. Recent uh, lucky bags are very high quality and you can get very quality things. Uh, but original originate but luck mm? i know what you're trying to say yeah, yeah, yeah. the original idea was stores had some leftover stock yes. right and they just wanted to get rid of it for the start of the new year like oh clean start mm. so they would pack a lot of things into yeah. those lucky bags and then just give them away for like less yes. than the actual original value i didn't like buying lucky bags when i was younger because you know that's just um leftovers ah. yeah, and i end up throwing a most of stuffs mm. I get, so I didn't really buy it. But recently, I, I'm really stoked every year. There is actually a couple of companies who make lucky bags now specifically. So for example, yes. for the fashion I'm wearing, Lolita mm. Fashion, they actually release now specific lucky bags. For example, picking a print that was popular and is usually $300, mm. but you can now buy it together with a headset for less than the price of the original print. Like a reprint that is kind of maybe coming together with some accessories mm. or something to make it a little bit more of a value. Or what I heard recently is department stores started doing lucky bags mm. that are fancy things like journeys like trips holiday trips and stuff oh yeah well. more like experience experience mm. lucky bags that seems to be a new thing this year like coming into mm. 2022 mm -hmm. and i'm excited because i want to catch one of those if oh, i can definitely mm -hmm. check out her channel see you in january <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so next thing is a little bit uh, related to this pandemic work booth work booth mm -hmm. have you seen that I seen one of those at one at Shinjuku Station. Yeah, it's a very recent thing, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, walk inside this little booth, mm -hmm. <laughs> not surrounded by people, and you can concentrate, concentrate, concentrate on your work. I think it's also sometimes mm -hmm. used for if you have distance meetings, mm -hmm. but you have a very noisy home, so you have a kid at home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people rent these ones to look a bit more professional. Mm -hmm. And you know, Japanese housing are very small. Mm. <laughs> you don't have much space to, you know, make oh, it no. like workplace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. I'm exactly. drowning in my stuff in my place. <laughs> I'm drowning in my stuff. I can't show the back of my room because it's so messy. <laughs> Every little space in your room is for a purpose. This is where you store clothes, this is where you store your items, mm. this is where you store this, yes. and then there's no spare wall yeah. to have the camera face when you do a business meeting. There are more options because of the pandemic mm. lately. I assume, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good or bad? Have you heard of mount joshi or mounting joshi? <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to mount someone, to step on so Yeah, 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 that's animal thing, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. This term in Japan is brag about something or showing off. 
of your oh, stuff, like okay. what you have, your current status or something like that. Ah, like a show off. Yes, show off. And they call them Mount Joshi. Mount Joshi, yes. In Japan, being modest or being humble is very, very important. important. So bragging or showing off is not considered as good. Yeah. And then people call them, oh. she's, she's such a Mount Joshi. And oh, it's not so it's meaning. like a bad word for yeah. someone. What would a Mount Joshi brag about? It's kind of hard to judge, but things like, you know, showing off your boyfriend on your social media, ah. or my boyfriend recently got Chanel bag. I can speak three languages and I can do that kind of thing, you know. I mean, it's like a girl who like every second sentence would go like, and my my American boyfriend is so uh, cool, yeah. something like that. Well, yeah. I guess right. it's interesting in the culture where, especially as a woman, mm. you're not supposed to say something positive about yourself that much. Yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to reject any kind of praise. I think it's a bit harsh of Japanese culture to so quickly judge people. Right. Of course, no one likes someone else who brags. Yeah. But it doesn't affect your life. Right. <laughs> you know, it, okay. She's happy? Fine. Right. I think Japan is a bit too harsh on that. I think, yeah, it's more like cultural thing. Mount Joshi. I thought about something completely else for people. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. You had no clues. Yes. <laughs> Oops. So that was ultimate things that only exist in Japan. How was it? How, was that new to you? Some were, some were not. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting how culture influences all of these. Mm -hmm. Some of them are a big deal in some countries, some are not a big deal in other right. countries. It, it's very, very fun. There's always something new. And the good thing about Japan is they invent so many new things here mm -hmm. that there's always something new popping up somewhere. Right. Don't forget to check out Ask Japanese channel and Catch a Cat channel with a C. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye.